Welcome back YouTube. I have for you the promised gel test on the weird slugs I found at the shop a few weeks ago. We have both made by Duplex USA. We have a broadhead expanding, like shattering slug. And we also have what's called a caviar slug. It's bonded with some polymers. It's basically bird shot. I'm not sure what number, but mixed together with, you know, polymers to make a kind of a slug. It's supposed to be a frangible round. I don't know how frangible. I'd like to see what they do in gel test because would you use this just for practicing or would you actually use this for home defense or something like that or urban environments, whatever, anything you don't want penetration of a slug. And this thing, I don't know what this is supposed to accomplish that a normal slug doesn't accomplish. 12 gauge is pretty devastating. Uh, I'd like to see what this does. This kind of reminds me of the rip round in pistols. So we'll see what it does. If we have enough room in the gel, we'll compare it to just some regular Remington sluggers, some one ounce, just regular sluggers. So the gun we're gonna be using today is the Benelli M4. This is the tactical model. This is with the Cerakoted Special Operations Jungle Coating. I believe it's infrared neutral. Um, it's, a, it's a single shot. Benelli kind of changed it around. They got tired of their semi-autos and whatever else they make and they decided just to go simple. They included rust in the chamber to kind of slow down the ejection. They didn't want bullets flying out too fast or empty shell casings. Um, very simple design. They wanted their guys to just, their operators, they got really confused with the other shotguns. They just wanted them to be able to run simple. So, you know, easy is better sometimes. They say minimal is good. The other way to put it is less is more, I guess. This has a 28 inch bull bench rest barrel on it. Uh, it's just what they decided to go with. Magpul buttstock. Textured anti-glare trigger guard. There's that little tiny rim of metal there. It's to, for tactical purposes. Keep your finger where it's supposed to be when it's not on the trigger. It comes with just a solid modified choke. There's no reason to have interchangeability. We don't need any of the threaded stuff or anything like that. So we have the front ACOG dot sight. They decided to go with gold. All the different colors are the red and the green and the whatever other digital colors. Again, it was getting the guys confused. Too many buttons and dials and knobs and batteries and all that. So they just went with this simple um, front bead ACOG sight. So that's what we're running today. Uh, that's all I got. I'm sorry. I tried to bring a low-grade shotgun to the table. I'm not trying to show off or anything, but this is what we have to work with. So let's get her done. All right. First up is going to be the 12-gauge broadhead. This is a two and three-quarter inch shell. It's one ounce or 435 grains, field load they say. It says it's got 1.2 inch diameter expansion. Now if you open up the packaging, they give you some more stuff there trying to explain how it's supposed to open up at different inches. So according to this, I think within 10 inches, this thing should be completely opened up to 10 inches wide. So according to this, this should come out of our gel. We'll see. I don't see a velocity on here. Unless I'm missing something, I do not see a velocity. So let's see what the velocity is, hopefully. We're five feet off of our chronograph, and that chronograph is five feet off of the gel. So 10 feet off the gel altogether. It's a very high brass shell. That's what it looks like. It's kind of pre-segmented. So I'm going to try to hit it dead center to try to get a good expansion out of it. Velocity clocked in at 1549. As you can see, it walloped the block. It picked it up and lifted it off to its side. Let me straighten these back up again. So that thing, as you can see, just came in there with some explosive energy. And those pellets did separate apart. They came right out at about six inches. Five, six inches for all of them. We recovered one. Here's what it looks like. Looks like a little piece of a gear broke off or something. Very sharp. Very solid, no deformation other than it breaking off like it was supposed to. And then as you can see, the center projectile or the slug portion just kept right on traveling. That's the first 20 inches of gel block. 
These are 20 inches, not 16. We come all the way down here to 31 inches. It's kind of hard to see. That gel block is pretty much toast, but there it is resting right there. We'll dig it out. It is facing forward, I believe, and it is a solid chunk of metal. But overall, that's pretty darn devastating. This is kind of an incredible round, actually, I think. All right, so that was pretty impressive. Now let's see what we get out of their caviar slug. This is their 12 gauge frangible. So again, it opens up in the back. I don't see any mentioning of velocity. So effective energy transfer, no over penetration, suitable for smooth bore and rifle barrels, suitable for all types of chokes, suitable for door breaching. Special wad ensures amortization, amortization. I don't know what that word is. And seals the propellant gases. Well, let's see what it does. Amortization. Sounds good to me. Let's amortize something. Wish me luck with the Benelli here. We got 1282 out of that. <laughs> That's a pretty chunky entrance wound. It shifted this block too. So as you can see, that's just an explosive entry wound. That's pretty cool looking, it's artwork. We had a lot of bounce back on those pellets. That's kind of weird how they did that. And then we have a lot of pellets just stuck in that central lump where the polymers held it together or the polyethylene, whatever they say. That's kind of weird. We didn't, that's not a lot of penetration right there. That's about four inches. Four and a half inches, I'd call it. Maybe there's the camera angle, right? Um, that's it. So I don't know what to think about that. It's a huge energy dump, but where is it gonna go? I mean, four inches? So it'll crush your ca your chest cavity or something like that, but is this a good for actual home defense? I'm not sure. Maybe we need to put some clothing in front of it and see what happens. Wow, it is pretty. Even from the top, I mean, it definitely widens out and hits that whole six inches of gel, and some of them have definitely exited. But that's just a crazy energy dump right at the beginning. All right, we flipped the block around to a good side, had to change the camera angle so that you can actually see what's going on. But let's put it up against the slugger. Remington, one ounce slug, going 1560. This is just a good old, old fashioned deer slug. Everybody's been using this for a long time. Let's see how it goes. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So fifteen nineteen on that one. Well, I used to have a clean block. So that's where it went in right there. Big old chunk taken out. Great entrance wound. Travels down. It meets the other wound, which is why I turned the block around. Um, you went right next to it, to tell you the truth. And then ended up right there. Right there. I'll dig them out. Let me give you a measurement real quick. All right, so we landed right at about 22 and a half, 23 inches, right there. All right, so we have the barbell that was recovered, and then we have one of those little fragments that was recovered. Each fragment by itself weighs 22, about 22 grains, so 22 times how many of our fragments, but then the barbell that's left over still retains about 309 grains just about, and we saw how deep that went, so that's no joke of a barbell. It did leave this plasticky mess throughout the whole trail. Now, moving on to the frangible, surprisingly, this still has some weight behind it. That's got 122 grains. That's that's in between 124 grain and 115 grain 9 millimeter bullet. It didn't make it that far, but it still has a little weight. Now, moving on to the traditional slugger that retained the most weight, and that was at 459 grains. And this was actually behind it, so I don't know if you count that or not but 482 grains combined. The expansion on this 
was 0.81 inches, 0 0.85, 0 0.85 at the widest. The barbell was its starting caliber. It didn't go any higher. It's 0.62. The frangible mess, I don't know. I mean, we can kind of... We can kind of say it's more than an inch, I guess, but stuck compressed into something, into tissue, it'd be about, yeah, probably about an inch, 0 0.95, 0 0.96, it's right around there, but it's all plastic, it just has a little bit of weight to it. So that's what they look like. So the next test is kind of an interesting one. It's not a normal test. People can throw this out or they can take it for what it's worth. I just personally think it's an interesting test. However, this is not my test. This is a test that comes from a channel called Tell Flater Mouse. I think I'm saying that right. At least that's how I've been saying it forever. Um, Tell Flater Mouse with Tell Flater folks. Go over there and check out his channel. He does primarily shotgun shell or slug testing, and he always shoots a lead plate. They have their famous lead plate test, kind of like Paul Harrell always has his famous meat test. Well, the lead plate test, I have to give credit to Tell Flater Mouse, but that doesn't mean I can't use it because it's a great test and I really like it. I've been doing it for years. I save all the lead that I pull out of my backstops and whatnot and we make plates out of it and we shoot them and it really does teach you a lot about kind of penetration into a hard barrier. You can get a lot of weird information out of it. I don't know what it really translates to in the real world all the time, but you'd be amazed at how a shell or a slug or a bullet will travel differently through ballistics gel, do something completely different when you hit a hard target. And it's really interesting to see what'll make it through sometimes. So. Here's the lead plate test, but check it out on Telflater Mouse. That's a good channel. So let's try with the frangible first. We're gonna hit the left plate with a frangible. Actually, let's hit the right plate because it's the clean face one and we might see a little bit more. The recoil doesn't feel too terrible out of that round. And if I can get the camera to focus, that's what it looks like. It's actually pretty cool in the lead plate. But it doesn't go too deep. I think it'd give somebody a bad day, maybe thump their heart once, you know, pretty hard. So this is really interesting. Camera guy recovered the bounced back polymer part, plasticky part, wad part. So there's a definite wad, and then here's a completely destroyed polymer wad that you could tell had pellets in it, but it bounced straight back and it landed by his feet. Interesting. Now let's try that crazy guy in the lead. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna shoot the left lead plate now. Hopefully everything stays in the lead plate. I heard things didn't stay in the lead plate. So I heard a piece land in the woods somewhere, I think. So something flew out of here. Made it a little bit deeper. I can see one of those metal pieces right here. If I can get it out. There's another one, there's another one and another one. Here's the couple that came out, I think. Sorry about the shadow. Wow, crazy shadow. Anyway, there's the dumbbell stuck in the middle of it, I think. I'm gonna stick my finger in about that deep. Sorry about the shadow, guys. Let me get out of the way of it. So let's hit one of these with a regular slug and see how deep we get. All right, Remington Slugger. All right, definitely the most recoil out of all of them. That's a deer slug. However, not as deep. Get out of the light again. So not as deep as the duplex shattering round. It went just about as deep as that together buckshot round, or birdshot round, the frangible. Interesting. So a lot less recoil out of this round. But that's in a hard target. That is nothing like flesh. Cool. Thanks, Telfighter Mouse. So I'm not going to shoot the broad-headed steel because that's steel on steel and that's a really bad idea. But I will shoot this frangible against steel because that's supposedly what it's made for, is to be able to hit targets and just dust itself apart. So I'm pretty close to this steel. Let's see how it works out. I'm 10 feet off of this steel. Don't try this at home. This is for professional hillbillies 
with Benelli's only. No recoil, and I don't hear anything landing. Like if I were to shoot that with buckshot, I would hear just raining down lead everywhere. I barely heard anything land. I might have heard one or two little pellets. So I don't know what they did or where they went, but they're not back at me, and they're not just falling around everywhere. So I'm gonna get just a little closer. So just a little bit closer. I'd say the barrel of this firearm is gonna be about seven feet max off of that target. Again, nothing came back here. I don't hear a lot landing. Now I will say that this gun is a little overgassed out of the factory, but I won't worry about that. So I know what you're thinking. You wanna see some rapid fire, gotcha. Well, at least we got a quick double tap. Cameraman, give me an up. Up. This gun is so cool and so powerful, the target can't handle more than two. Forget the target. I just want to show you how fast this gun can run. Give me an up, cameraman. Up. And what I forgot to tell you is this gun also comes with a free can launcher. Can launcher, two thumbs up. Thanks for including that. Now I know what some of you are thinking, is how would one of these caviar slugs do against a door off of a FedEx truck? I don't know. Now why would you shoot a door off of a FedEx truck? I don't know, but this door's not on a FedEx truck, so you can't say that I'm shooting a FedEx truck. I'm just letting you know, there's a door and we're gonna shoot it. First for comparison, let's do a normal bird shot. That's just your typical Walmart bird shot. Ouch. Now caviar slug. Holy crap. Let's take a look. So the regular bird shot went in, but not through the second layer. Caviar slug definitely went through the second layer. Now, in its defense, now that bulge right there in the middle, that is a second layer that's pretty solid. And in its defense, the caviar slug did not have to go through that same thing over here. So it didn't really have to go through a second layer. All right, to be fair, I'm gonna put another caviar slug where the other one went. So, next to where the original bird shot went, smoked it. So yeah, that totally smoked it. And I know there's a handful of you out there that want to see the microwave get shot too. It's just been getting to you. Good one. Over gas. And that's what you do to a misbehaving microwave. So the next time we play with shotguns, we'll probably have to put Hillbilly 1 back inside because we're dealing with some big time stuff next. We better bring out the Mossberg 930 to handle this one. I don't know if any of you know what a Black Magic is, but Brennicky makes a really nasty slug called the Black Magic. This thing right now at the muzzle has 1,502 feet per second. That's pretty crazy. That energy translates to 3,000 foot pounds of energy. This is nasty. I can't even shoot this out of this firearm because it'll literally break my shoulder. And after a few rounds, it'll break the foregrip right off this gun. So this is one you don't want to miss. This is devastating cartridge. And it's generally available, especially during hunting season. Also, we're going to put up the Winchester Defender. This is what's known as the PDX-112 sometimes. They change it around every now and then. This doesn't have copper-plated buckshot, but usually it does. The slug right here that you see in the middle of this 1150 feet per second out of a slug is going pretty good and then it's got the three pellets to back it up it's got really good patterns you're not going to want to miss this this is a great home defense round so come back and see that video so the regular viewers of the channel know that we're usually pretty serious but every now and then you just got to have fun that's what hillbilly guns are for this was a flea market pickup with a can of spray paint well two cans of spray paint black and then landscaper yellow now that's my cerakote so 
It's actually an H&R, or a New England Firearms 12 gauge single shot. It's called a Pardoner. This one is the SB1. So this is one of the older ones. They made the SB1s, the SB2s. Uh, they're pretty handy little shotguns though. This thing's had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of rounds through it. This keeps things out of my garden. They're pretty cool. You can find them at flea markets for like a hundred bucks. Well, maybe now 150, but pick one up if you see one. They're actually pretty handy. They come in 410, 20, 12, 10 gauge, um, and then they come in the rifle calibers too. They're pretty cool. So thanks for watching, and thanks to all of our Patreon members for all of your support. If you like what we do here at the Turkey's Opinion, please click like, share, and subscribe. Click that notification bell, and you'll know as soon as our videos come down. Until we see you next time, have fun, stay safe, and keep shooting. See you next time.